Welcome to Looptopia, where we are building our own utopian homestead, and these are our fireside chats. So we're going to talk about first one of the odd switcheroos that we're kind of surprised we saw actually at Walmart. Now, you guys have been hearing about with the food shortages, how stores are trying to make their stores still look stocked. So they will move merchandise around. They will collapse shelves. They will make the shelves wider, the like aisles. the aisles, the yeah. aisles wider. They'll take a shelf out and then move each aisle over a little bit. So we've been seeing this, but this is probably one of the more ridiculous this things we've a, ever seen. Although it has a lot of complications. Like, but yeah, there's yeah. a lot behind the scenes. And uh, let's just show you what it is. So when you buy a crepe at Walmart, um, people, like when I went to college, Back in the day when dinosaurs were on the earth, <laughs> we, in high school, you would just go out and get milk crates. They were everywhere, and most places didn't care if you took them, and then sometimes we were just shady and we stole them from back, you know, behind a, a, a grocery store. At least I've heard of people doing stuff like that. But <laughs> they were really useful in college, you know, like you'd stack them and it was like a cheap, The cheap makeshift play. storage. <laughs> So there was such a demand for these things that they started making versions of them that are a lot chintzier. Um, the plastic on these things are real thin. You couldn't really stack much on these with any sort of weight. They're not like a real milk crate. And this is what they have been selling for the last 15 years. Yeah, they've been really easy. 20 years to buy in Walmart. Okay? Compared to, this is a real milk crate. The kind that you get from... You know, an actual place like a dairy or somewhere there, a grocery store that trades milk. And what happens is um, these are super thick, super strong, and they're meant to take weight. Like you can stack a lot of these on top of each other. Yeah. Look how thick that is. They the carry plastic. four gallons of milk in each <clears throat> one and they're meant to last forever. So this is a real milk container. Okay, do we understand the difference? Then <laughs> Now let's go on to what we saw. And the first thing... <laughs> What we're going to show you is a display and my partner Lorelai by the way if you have never seen us before I have a partner off screen named Lorelai she doesn't like being on film so you won't see her but she's here commenting <clears throat> we're walking by and normally they sell these chintzy college ones we were talking about the thin and they're actually more expensive they're, I think they're like nine bucks now or something well here they got them listed at six bucks right but I've seen the bigger ones go for so we're walking by, and all of a sudden, Lorelai takes a double take, like, a, oh. Well, I smelled it. And then we were like, are those real milk crates they're selling? And they so they have these little, like, decorative throw pillows shoved into them. And I'm like, okay, one, that's just a weird display to begin with. And two, these are real milk crates. They didn't even wash the milk out of them. Yeah, let's show those pictures, right? So we're looking at them closer, and there's, like, white milk dried in these things they didn't even bother cleaning them up to sell them because like if you've ever worked in a grocery store or stock you know stock the cooler in there they all leak yeah there's always milk leaking on the crates every the time and it always smells like a little bit of sour milk and that's what i smelled and i was like wait what so they're putting like all these nice new pillows on the sour milk <laughs> but yeah they didn't even like have some poor pee on it <laughs> Walmart go out and hose them off out back. They're just, they took them straight out of the cooler. Yeah, they were like... And shoved some pillows in them to fill up a space because it was a big empty aisle, you know. Like, like look at this. Look at, here's a close-up. This is how dirty they are. And they're like stuffing brand new stuff in them. Well, and the and worst we part like, is you and I were like, that's a pretty good price for a real milk crate. That's so sad. Because we were, we were like... You know, that's, you can't get real milk crates easy anymore. Uh, hmm, but it turns sucks. out, yeah, actually, you can get real milk crates pretty easy now. And the thing is, I've worked in so many grocery stores over the last years. They have to account for every single milk crate. I remember we cracked one once and had to, like, write up a report. Oh, wow. And still give it back to them. So to prove that we weren't stealing them like they were the dairies that had a real hard time getting these for a while and i guess they got really expensive they, or... yeah now they're really expensive i guess in the 80s they weren't a big deal when people were taking them left and right but now but yeah like over the last 10 15 20 years i guess they got really really expensive and 
So the dairies yeah. kept a real like hard line on them. So that goes to show you that if Walmart is just straight taking them out of the cooler and putting them on their shelves to sell, the dairies don't want them back. And I've heard that from a few other places too. Yeah, we're kind of hearing some from sources I talked to. Um, there is one lady I talked to that worked at a food bank, and she was like, they told us not to send them back. Yep, they just, they just kinda, like, take them. And they sort so, of hand it out, like... You have to ask, why do you want us to take them all of a sudden after all these years? Why are they willing to sell these and not have to report back to the dairies? Well, what do you think that answer is? I'm thinking it's because there's no dairies, because yeah. there's no feed. And if you don't have feed, you can't feed your dairy cows. And and they so last year during the when we were doing these reports, they were killing all the cows because yeah when they shut the schools down, that was where the bulk of milk goes. The they bulk shut of milk. Down the, and so the they were like, we did. can't just feed these cows, and they were dumping milk on the ground. Just and so they killed a bunch of cows, and it takes a long time to grow a cow to milkable age and a big investment of money. So. We knew there was going to be a shortage anyway, and now it's really starting to hit. It's and you're really showing up now. You're starting to see, you know, like here, look at this ad that came out, like this little post. All of a sudden, they're talking about getting milk from other sources. Here's cow cockroach milk, you know, like it's so much better for you. Like it reminds me. Or you could just not drink milk. Like it won't. I remember there was an one of the very beginning seasons of The Simpsons. There's an, a Simpsons where Bart. The school, of course, the school is always running on like a negative budget, and yeah. you know it's a joke on there. And they run out of budget money to buy milk, and so they're they're serving something called milk. M A L K. <laughs> and Bart like looks at the labels like milk. And uh, and then what happens was um, I think he sneaks back eventually to the processing plant, and they find out it's they're just milking rats. <laughs> you know, they're like milking rats. So you're starting to see this, and then, you know, I mean, honestly, I'm not a big fan. Of, dairy cows have a horrible life, and I'm not a fan of dairy's really not healthy for you. And so it's like, mm, you know, help wasn't bankruptcy, like Bugs is saying. Yep. Yeah. I mean, sorry. And yeah, that's not a popular opinion. No, but... it, it, not in the prepper community. We get lambasted for that. But it's really, you know, factory farming is not a nice thing. So. It's not a nice thing, and it's not a healthy thing. Like, you're not doing yourself any favors with it, so. Yeah. I mean, I still think there'll be, like, the little mom-and-pop farms and stuff like that, but the, uh, honestly, the factory farming, I'm glad to see it go. It's fine. That's a horrible practice. Um, that being said, before we get in too much, too much, we wanted to share that with you, and if you're watching on YouTube, this is about as much as we can say on YouTube. So yeah, that's all you get. <laughs> we are ending, yeah, this is all you get on YouTube. Now, we're going to continue to talk about uh, some other very important developments that have been happening, and uh, stuff about the food chain supply, and we're just going to talk a lot about the uncensored stuff we're, we're, we're not allowed to talk to on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, thanks. Um, you can come over to any of these platforms like Odyssey, Brighton, BitChute. There will be links below if you want to follow it. And what you do is you just hit the story with the same, uh, you'll have the same, same thumbnail. So, there you go. We love you guys. Hang in there. YouTube's awful. Please move <laughs> to these other platforms. Okay, now.